I think it'll be all right, though. We, uh, you know, we're going to raise a kid in Brooklyn, which, uh, you know, that should be a fun science experiment. <laughs> Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Um, you know, we moved there seven years ago before the Great White Migration. <laughs> and now my kid's going to live there. And honestly, it's my favorite place I've ever lived. It truly is. And it has been since the first day I moved in. My first day, I'm outside my building. I was breaking down boxes. And this woman approached me and like, you know when you see somebody and you're not sure if they're a crackhead? <laughs> right, because their clothes are all shitty, but their face is smooth. So you're like, I don't know, what the fuck? <laughs> so I'm like looking at this woman trying to determine crackish behavior. <laughs> and then she just kind of started slithering down the sidewalk. <laughs> I was like, oh, yo, nope, that's a crackhead, definitely. <laughs> And she just stopped right in front of my building, right? Pulled up immediately, looked me right in the eyes and just goes, oh, you knew, right? And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, yeah, she's like, oh, cause you look real good, right? Like you look real good. Like it's obvious that you go to the gym, right? Like it's clear that you go to the gym. Then she just walked away. Yeah, I was like, what is this? Everything I needed in my childhood? Are you kidding? This is Big Bad Brooklyn. Some stranger shows up, injects me with self-esteem, and then rides off into the sunset. <laughs> like a crackhead Lone Ranger. <laughs> this is delightful. There are so many people, though. You know, that, that makes me worried about raising a kid in New York. Like, I want to microchip my kid. Keep track of him. I want to blast a chip right into the back of his neck like he's an adopted cat. <laughs> I do, because I was a leash kid. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah, it's a kid on a leash. <laughs> I know, but I love that that's a problematic thing in 2019. Like, oh, I can't believe your mother treated you like a beagle. <laughs> it's like, no, she didn't tie me up outside of coffee shops and make me wait with a bowl of water. That's not, <laughs> that wasn't my life. I needed it. I truly required a leash because I was a runner. <laughs> I'd constantly run. My mom would turn her head for a second. I'd start like crip walking into four lanes of traffic. <laughs> She'd turn around and be like, yeah! <laughs> Lasso me back. And it's like, lady, at some point, you got to let Darwinism take its course. Because <laughs> now I'm out here procreating, muddying up the genetic waters. <laughs> New York City, though, you know, growing up here, being born and raised here can kind of turn you into one of two people, right? There's so much going on. Everything is pretty traumatizing. From the, if, you, if you're born and raised here, you're basically, parents are deciding to desensitize their kid to everything. From the time they're born, their eyes are just propped open like clockwork orange. <laughs> just absorbing every nightmare that this city has to offer. So it can make you one of two people, right? It can make you some weird insular hermit that doesn't like leaving their apartment. Or it could toughen you up, it could prepare you for life, right? Like my son probably won't be nervous for menial shit like a job interview? How could my kid be nervous for a job interview when at four weeks old, some homeless woman spit into his mouth? <laughs> Honestly, that's how we plan to vaccinate, so. <laughs> it's an expensive city, but you can cut costs here and there. 